This is Gustavo Santa Juliana. The guy that tested. This guy made the first flight of my Super Cup. You know that? Oh, really? When I bought my Super Cup, I fled from Necochea to Tres, Ar Three Arroyos, Tres Arroyos, where Gustavo and Santiago lives. We disarm completely the plane, and when we put it together, Gustavo made the test the flight. flight. Yeah. Wow. Gustavo and his son Santiago and are one of the best pilots here in this event, so let's see how they do it. Just the, is this what you brought? Okay, that's good. Thank you. I believe he hurry a little bit, yeah. perhaps in his second try. He asked it a little early. Yeah, yeah. a little, little early. Hey, that Asado yesterday was really good that you had. And you said to me, you said to me, I don't know if we're going to have enough lamb, but I knew you were joking because <laughs> the whole long string line of people, 200 people, I don't know. I think, I think they're, they were still... They were still butchering the second <laughs> lamb, and everybody, their plates were full. Yeah, like, I know. You had five was, more, uh, yeah. and I didn't know. I didn't know. I mean, you know, because uh, I, I, it's the first, uh, first asado I've ever been to, and it that was, was your a, first asado. Yeah, and it was oh, the wow. most amazing thing. Yeah, wow, what's an honor to have to, you here in to your ex first asado? <laughs> to, to experience uh, the asado and the come the. The group of people that you brought together here, Kike, is really amazing. Yeah, you know, thank and, you very much, and, and for the way people to enjoy the community amongst each other with Sato, the social aspect of it is a really huge, a really huge thing. Waiting the, you know, with the four hours I think it took to yeah. on the open fire for the for the lamb. They say cook. that yesterday the cookers. Yeah, is that what it was about four? Four, 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 and perhaps four, four and a half hours. Four of hours, cooking, and then yeah. you turn it. One side to the other, turn, yeah. One side, and everybody knows to sit down then because when it's turned to the back side to the fire, the the the, the flayed out lamb when it's so turned to the back fastball. side. So you learn fastball. That yes, means it's thirty true, minutes, yeah. and we can grab our plate and we can go exactly and sit down. perfect, perfect explanation. Yeah. yeah. And, and how the taste was? You you enjoyed the, oh, I really the enjoyed taste it. of the lamb? Really yeah. enjoyed it. Yeah. And I think the only spice was salt. Yeah. It's just the natural flavor of the lamb. They were talking about the grass in this region. Exactly. It's a good flavor. It's a good flavor to exactly. the meat. Exactly. The, the, the kind of the grass that they eat make mm -hmm. that flavor on the, mm -hmm. on the meat. And, and it's I, awesome. And I love to taste the ribs, you know, the flavor of the ribs. And then I also had some of the roast, you know, so yeah. to fill up a little bit more. And uh, yeah, so that was a really good experience with uh, the Patagonic Everyone's lamb sitting. is something famous. It's, it's something really famous here. Everyone sitting in the shade of the, in the, in the, in the warm afternoon, sitting in the shade. And oh, here we go. We got. You uh, can see Gustavo playing, <laughs> sleeping one side to the other. He's bringing it down. Wee Let's see what he do. He's coming in a little quick. Well, he's getting rid of it now. Oh, now we slow down. Hold it through. Slide the tires. Yes, so. so bad. A hundred and one, I believe, from this distance. Let's see what Darío says. Darío already took the, uh, the measure. And Gustavo is turning out. Spin around. All right. That's a nice earth plane. This is yeah, a 172. 170 is a nice, nice airplane. Mm -hmm. Looks like a 170B with the. It's a 170B, exactly. With the 
modern flap. Yeah. The biggest flap. A folder flap. So the takeoff was 124 and a half meters and the landing 100 and a half meters. His total is 100 and I, I lose the, the number. Sorry, yeah, I was looking at the view. <laughs> <laughs> the the okay, he's going again on his second round. Tail up. Let's see what Dario says. I, I believe it take off before that measure. What do you think, Bob? Oh yeah, I thought he was up a little bit. Yes, me too. I believe the judges are wrong for maybe about five meters or a little more. Five or seven. Wow, look that shot. It's really dramatic with the mountains. Yeah, you can see that eels. And look, everybody's in short sleeves. Very comfortable. It's a cool morning, yeah, but it's a uh, very pleasant, very pleasant climate here. <coughs> Middle of summer in Argentina. So we were saying earlier, this is the only event in South America. In Argentina or... Probably the only event. Yeah. PK is, PK is going to be modest about it but i'll just tell you this is the <laughs> only event in south america and it's in the biggest concentration of the really the beginning of the unfolding the blossoming of bush flying in south america is right here in traveling with kike's efforts here what this is year four of you working with the bush to develop the bush flying is that correct kike yeah it's true we started doing here a few years ago and now we are super glad to have all those planes here, you two by my side, people <laughs> flying, people watching this online, people watching this here. This is the biggest reward we have what, on what, doing this. What I find is nice. We live in the middle. Something more. Like an airplane come over, but it, it's, it's, it's quite a nice thing. Checking those things with the community. They have the children. Uh, we feel sweets. You know, it's very much a part of village you know, this kid, dropping uh, sweets to the kids the funny thing was it had rained the day before there was these muddy puddles <laughs> he flew behind the behind the, the, the <coughs> leisure center he dropped these sweets well the kids ran through all the mud to get the sweets oh the picture was the, the mother's faces because they go oh there's kiki <laughs> they're waving and all the sweets come down and the mother oh my god all the kids wow it's strange to the mud they're all dirty now <laughs> but it, it this place is very much part of the village. You feel that with a pretty fine. Raining petals. So here's, here's Gustavo on a three quarter mile final. He looks like a little high right now, but he's gonna play for a little bit before he touch. Yeah. <laughs> Part of his his art. Yeah. Part of his <laughs> he art, he liked right? to dance before yeah. <laughs> the approach. Save some energy for the dance, right? <laughs> yeah. Or maybe he's stable straight no, he's in. He's stable like a, more than the first try. Yeah. Like a laser this time. Yeah. <laughs> ah, no, he can do it. He's doing it right now. Uh -oh. A little slip from one side to the other. Okay, let's see. Gustavo's second land. Ah. That was too much. <laughs> okay, that was Santiago, sorry, Gustavo Santa Juliana. So who's the main 
George Market. Darío is the main, the one that takes the, the measurements. He's from my tent. He's a big friend of Patagonia Bush Pilots. He's part of our, our great team. <laughs> and the Perrascona is now on the line. He's representing my tent too. Horacio Ascona. Ascona. His nickname is Perro Dog. The perro. dog. Mm. El Perro Ascona. Why is that? What's he done today? <laughs> we should ask. I don't know. I don't know that story. Judges have here. This plane with the orange stripe. This let's know. Yeah. Uh, who's who, which plane is that? The third plane from the beginning yeah. of the Earth yeah. to here yeah. is a Cessna 172 XP with 210 horsepower. That's the one you were flying yesterday? Yes. Yeah, that's the one that was well flown yesterday. Somebody was really handling that airplane well. That must have been you, KK. I don't uh, know. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps Alejandro uh, was flying the airplane too, and he's a great pilot. Oh, okay. He's one of our main pilots here. And I believe next of the perro is coming, no, then Santiago, and in the end, Alejandro. And if we have time, perhaps I, I make a round with the XP. Oh, yeah. It's an awesome plane. Yeah. A real awesome plane. It performed very similar to a 182, but it's lighter. Mm -hmm. It eats less fuel. So I love that thing, really. Mm -hmm. hey, how many planes are in the hangar? We have the 150, the 172 XP, the Super Cub, the Coyote, and I believe those are all the time here. I hope soon. A Kodiak, perhaps. Yeah, <laughs> it will be nice. It will be nice to have a Kodiak here. I think maybe you need to. We're making a bigger hangar. Did you build this? Okay. Myself with Emilio, with the one that cooked yesterday the lambs. Oh, Emilio, my friend that works in the yeah. Armeria, helped yeah. me every single day for 10 months to ten months. build wow. this hangar, the two of us. Long, long was it? It's a completely different approach that the perro is doing. It's a flatter approach. That means that he has more horizontal energy, so I believe he's going to take more distance to break. To stop. Oh. One, two, three. A little bit short. Tires are cheap. <laughs> Those are cheap. <laughs> <laughs> Those tires are cheaper than the bush ones wheels. that we use, the bush wheels. So, Bob, in a 31 bush wheel in a cab what pressure do you recommend to use in this kind of competition I, you, you show me with 35 making water ski with 2.2 pci but in a competition like this one what do you recommend well uh he's taxing back well i, <laughs> I really say that it's a balance between the amount of sidewall absorption for that contact when you run her you just talked about him having energy horizontal with forward speed 
So if it's more efficient to be vertical down exactly. to your line that you can see, and I hope the guys can see the line. Do they have some fresh chalk to put on the line occasionally to to mark it if they, they need they to? They see to the side very better yes. the line because it's exactly. wider and you have two flats each, each side and a cone. So it, oh, it's, they've it's got easier a good from, definition. Okay, very from good. From the thing to see it. Yeah. Oh yeah, I see the cones from here. Mm. So the so and here we go for takeoff number two. Uh, we can talk about that tire pressure thing in a minute because it's a big it's a big topic. Yeah, I know. We'll get the second takeoff on and we'll talk about it on the downwind here. Hey, Sebastian is telling the pedal where is the place to stop the plane before the takeoff, and he's free to go, I believe, right now. <coughs> Have you seen the extension of the nose wheel shock when he take off? Mm -hmm, it keeps going out. Yeah. 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 So on the on the uh, tires, you don't want them so. You want them soft enough that with the suspension, whatever the shocks are, that there's a marriage of pressure so that when you come in on that landing, that it doesn't hop. Try to take, have them flat enough that it, it, it doesn't have meters. a hop. <coughs> 110 meters, yeah. It's like a takeoff or a ratio. It's like a Oh, we are on on the screen right now. <laughs> oh, hello. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> There's the camera right out there at the runway. Yeah. Well, thank you everyone to who is watching us here. Thank you for following what we are doing here at Patagonia. Yeah. So this is a uh, this is a moment when uh, I don't. This is very well covered. This is very well covered. Oh, Put it out nice. here to the world. Many, you know, place, you... many places to stay when people come. <coughs> Tourists. <laughs> you see the dragon? Oh yeah, I did on the roof. Yeah, the fire breathing dragon. Yeah, up on the roof of the house. You see it throwing yeah. fire from the mouth? No, no. no, no Eight antenna piano. Oh. oh. But we have an artist. Yes, he's a force engineer. And, uh, but his passion is and his, uh, workshop is beautiful. Just like when I mean the falls to our dragons fight with smoke. Where is that? I will take it there. <laughs> We will visit those so places. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Super yeah. near. And, uh, yeah. I think he's actually got a dinosaur. We are the way to. Uh, yes. Yeah, he made a dinosaur too. He's a great artist. Outdoor sculptures. Outdoor sculptures. Outdoor sculptures. Outdoor sculptures. Big outdoor steel sculptures. Yeah. 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 But we yes, are realism in town. shape. He do realistic, realistic things. Yeah. Okay, Pedro is on the on his final. Can you hear, can you hear short final, he's looking ahead. From our perspective, it looks like you did a good job just getting across the line and, and getting down. Yeah. Great job, Perro. Huh? <laughs> yeah. You can see it. <coughs> 131, perhaps. 
Oh, 170's back. Ah, now it's Santiago, Santa Juliana turn. Santiago is one of my best friends in Argentina Aviation. Oh, really? That's yes. Great. He's a great kid, a great pilot. This is the son of oh. Exactly. Both are crop duster pilots. They have a few planes in Buenos Aires. And they fly since they born. Hmm. You see their fuel system in there. The long range fuel, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I showed yeah, them cool. my fuel system and they copy my fuel system. <laughs> oh, okay, with a the heads containers, a lot more of fuel. <laughs> I only carried 40 liters and they came with 80. Now, Santi, his tail is on the air. One, two, three, go! Yes! Great takeoff for Santiago Santa Juliana. So this is the sun now. This is yes, the sun. this is Gustavo Sun. Yeah. So, so if he's improved on his father, that's going to be an awkward. It just happens. <laughs> it just happens. Don't worry about you it. You know go about that, go, huh? Go, <laughs> you can go. tell us your story about that. Go with it. Yeah, that's great. Right. It's evolution. It's, you're, you're just happy with that. Well, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see the number. I'm so happy Santiago and Gustavo are here because they are a real big part of Patagonia Bush Pilot. They helped me a lot buying my Super Cup. You know, Bob, that having a Super Cup is not a super easy plane to have. It's like uh, something important. The aviation community to, to be a cap pilot is something kind of. Different. 83 meters. 83 meters from Santi. Great. Great performance. I believe it's going to be hard to beat that takeoff in this category. I just have noticed here that everything, everything's a little more difficult in Argentina too. For sure. That's what your topic is. Yeah. Yes. And, and to have, uh, you know, everything from fuel to, just everything is more difficult. Everything has to be imported. Airplanes have to be imported. And as we know, bush flying has actually caught on more recently. So, so the in the world. So, and here we are, short final. He's not wasting any time to make <laughs> to make his yeah, he's stable. Wait, 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 wait. I hope he's not unqualified, short. disqualified. He's make a real short landing. That was very graceful. Don't look. Here, the crowd's the crowd. crowd. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Great job, Santi. Oh, is it, the, the line judges say that's a clean, it's a clean, uh, Grande Santi, papá. So that was a clean disqualified. Disqualified, no. Oh, he touched before the line. Oh, that's too bad. It was. Well, this little gas we are feeling here right now can it's help very, Santiago very to yeah. take off shortly. I hope he can use it. This is stopping right now, the gas, but let's see. Yes! 85, 84, or 7, no, it's 80, 80 something is gonna be. <clears throat> You can see here, from here, the XP running right now. The engine of Patagonia Bush pilot plane is on right now. Breeze gets cool, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I feel that breeze. <laughs> 15 degrees at the moment. 
Well, if he can come back 84 around... 84 meters, 84.5 meters. So it's a little bit longer than the last. If he can come back around on his, uh, on his second attempt and make the same landing just, just over the line, that's going to be the shortest by far for the day. Yes. You are saying it's quite well marked with cones and lines, so there's no excuses. Well, <laughs> no, there's... It. there's a, it's, 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 it's... Where is it? It's yeah. always a, it's the, it's And I believe from the view of the drone is better than where we are to yeah. see the touch He's turning in. so this is incredible we are perhaps 120 meters from the touch line but the best view is from the drone they changed the view Whoa, whoa, oh. Nope. Mm, I don't know. No, it Vamos, Santi. Vamos, Santi. Let's see the number that was in, the judge it says. 79 and a half meters. It was the there shortest. Go. I don't remember the Bristol number, but it's a different category. So Santiago, I believe is on the top of the list. He's gonna yep. it's gonna be hard to beat this guy. Up is Alejandro Wright is going to be the next. He's, uh, he's representing uh, the Bush pilots at the moment. <laughs> he's representing us. Yeah. Yes. Okay, guys, after Alejandro, I'm gonna make a try, so I yeah, good. along yeah, yeah. here, yeah? Show us, show us what you do, King. Nah, it's gonna be hard to beat <laughs> Santiago. After Alejandro's takeoff, Rodrigo is going to pick me up here. So, so Alejandro is one of the, the bright family, so we have Bernardo, I think he's the cousin of Bernardo. Yes, it is. And they have a small engineering firm on the other side of Trevelyan. Father. Yes, Vitus, uh, Vitus Bright was one of the first pilots here in Trevelin. Uh, he used to have an avion, and, and that plane is just behind us on the green hangar. That plane was flipped over with a guest a few years ago, and Vitus' father took perhaps 10 years to put it back together and he died before he could fly it again so last year we, we helped Alejandro eh, Bernardo that is the the youngest son of Vitus and we put it all back together and make the test flight of the plane now Alejandro is going to the mark And we're off. 
is our length, looking like uh, somewhere between 100 and, 100 and 110 meters. Not a big difference. Was the shortest? I think it was 82 the shortest. Let's see if we get the leader border. Yeah, that was a really good asado yesterday. Didn't see the guys at uh, didn't see the guys uh, practicing too much, you know, during the day. Uh, of course, it was windy. You know, it's yeah. kind of windy, and it got hot later. But, uh, it was a bit of a wild morning. <laughs> I think with that, with that bombing. <laughs> the and we had the flower, flower bombing yesterday. There were people meters. flew during that. It's an eight meters for yeah, one hundred and eight. So you have family here? Yeah, well, my wife's family. Your yeah, wife's family. family. So she was from here, and she, she was over there at your college when you were in Wales. Yeah, she was at Roberts. I think that's First Asado experience, it's quite amazing. And we're a short final. Looks very stable. There. Will he make it? I think he was before the line. Yeah. Just gonna taxi back and give it a second try. I see, he's still got the passenger seat in that airplane. Be one little bit of weight he could take out, you know, it only yeah. takes about a minute. energy it takes to organize it. TK's been going non-stop for quite a long time. So here he comes for a second or two. As I mentioned, I was in I was in Wales hiking around with a backpack when I was about 15 years old. Quite beautiful, very beautiful country. And here we at the line. Three and a half miles an hour of, no, of headwind on the nose there, and tell you that's that makes a big difference compared to it was calm earlier. For the lighter airplanes, it was very calm. Uh, see and take off distances bigger. 172 XP, uh, you know, is uh, is shorter than the. It's gr that's a great airplane. Uh, that little wind is helping in the and. And it's shorter than the lighter aircraft were, than the, than the lighter sport, the lighter weight airplanes. Took more runway than this. Yeah. The, uh, did you notice when he took off, the, the left main wheel 
it stopped almost immediately. So that brake is dragging on it. It doesn't hurt him at all to land him on the takeoff. It's, he's dragging, a little bit of drag, yeah. Rolling hills. So he named the mountains of Irwin the same as, yes. Yeah, I think it's in Jones because it came from the area. Oh, yeah. People here are Kansas Jones. Oh? Yeah. So when did, uh, when, how many generations ago did people come from Wales to this part of Argentina? Mid 1800s? Yeah, I should know this because it's 1865. Okay, so similar to the expansion of the West in America is an expansion here. So now we're in a short final. Owens ME2 XP. Oh, drag a little more power. Can they make the line. Tires are cheap, right? He slid her to a stop. That's that brake. <coughs> From where we are, we can't see if they've got the if they're uh, got a legal a legal landing or not. We have to wait to hear it from the judges. Like Kiko said, to, to get things here, to get the uh, parts and equipment in. Maybe it'll change this next few years, I don't know. 128, 128 meters. meters, okay, so it's a good, good landing. Switching pilots now to KK. So what's the, do you know the tail number on that aircraft? So that's the 170, is Guliana, so the... Lima, Victor. Okay, oh, here we are, KK, yeah. yep, let's see, he's got him. Hail Bragg to KK. There's, that's a Welsh name now, isn't it? Right there. Is that German? B R A I G? Oh, there he goes. Pulling out the seat. He's very casual. He's very competitive. Fact. Did I say that in front of him? Oh, no. I see. He'd already left when I said pull out the seat. When my son and I were competing at Valdez, we were winning and we had to stay winning. I remember he had a, he had a coat like this that we yeah. two ounces. But when he got in the plane, he didn't need it anymore. So he turn on a little heat. And so he would hand me the coat after, you know, he'd take the coat off as he got in the plane and hand me the coat. Just one less, one couple of ounces yeah, less. Oh, that's up. That's up. <coughs> 
wonder how much fuel they've got on board. They obviously didn't have to add fuel for KK to go. Here is KK coming up to the line. What's he down at? He's at 85, 80, between 80 and 80 and 90, so probably somewhere around 85. out of here. A bit cooler today. That's good for the competition. Yeah. It's been quite hot. I wore shorts down here today and first day I had on uh, two days ago I had on long pants all day and everybody else is in shorts. I said, I'm wearing shorts. Today is cool. Very cool. We've got that smoke and the cloud of high thin overcast. It keeps the sun off the ground. Oh, it's a little higher this time. Slipping her in. Yeah, he's slipping it down. He's really coming on down. I had carried a little more energy that time. Take off, but uh, landing is 
Well, you got a first, the first one was a good pair. Excuse me. Yeah, so I got a little, uh, got this cough here and almost at the end of a cold. It's a cold I picked up in Chile. Don't worry, it's not an Argentine cold, it's a Chilean cold. It's long gone. Yes, <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> we got our water truck rolling across the way here. No detail unmissed. So how is it you're from France and you came here to Buenos Aires to get to a flight school and right. you ended up here in Trevain. So how, how did that go? Right. And so I was looking for a flight school and I chat with um, people on Instagram, who t like random pilots I found, um, who told me that the best place to, to fly here in Patagonia was uh, right here in traveling with Kike and Patagonia Bush Pilot. Um, and um, and yeah, so I, I chatted with Gig Gay, I did my benchmark, I was a bit worried about coming to a tiny town by myself. Um, but yeah, I came and it, it's just magical to be able to, to take off uh, immediately without it having to like wait. And I've been here for three months now. Oh, for three months, training yeah. here with PK and... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm English hour 32 now, I'm eight hours left. Okay, so almost there. Yeah. Yeah, almost there. And you speak Spanish? A little bit? Poquito? Yeah, yeah. So my, my, in Buenos Aires, I was not, my, my Spanish was kind of flatlining because, uh, like, most of my friends spoke English very well, but, um, here people don't speak English that much, so it makes you speak a lot more in my <laughs> Spanish. Got it sure better. I mean, I've been here eight years, and what I find is I, I, I seek out English speakers just because now and again, I just want to speak easy oh yeah <laughs> I, have to, I have to think uh, to speak spanish where did you learn spanish um here or yeah in a bar not so far away oh god okay <laughs> yeah so i've never actually stood i just listen and that's why i got so much um, bad language oh yeah you know at the time you don't, you don't realize how offensive it is but you start chatting no, they say the the dictionary for bad language in argentina is actually bigger than the the normal dictionary so, oh, that's possible. So yeah, 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 yeah. Like, like family members and like yeah. all the. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, and of course, you're you're French, so you'll be an expert on food. How do you find the food here? Uh, food is great. My favorite food is um, the lomo de bife. Okay. Um, yeah, that's really good here. We we have we eat a lot of like imported Argentinian food in, in like beef in France, but yeah. it's not as good as here for sure. No, they keep the good stuff here. My, my friend, yeah, yeah, yeah. he's from awesome, France, yeah. and he said, no, the best the best wine is still in France. We, we only export the stuff we don't <laughs> That's possible, yeah, yeah, yeah. And wine is good here as well, for sure. Yeah. My first time here was maybe 20 years ago, and it's amazing how it's it's grown slowly, but it's grown in, a, in an interesting way, traveling and, and it's a quality way, you know. It, it's, uh, oh, yeah, and, what have you seen in 20 years here? What's been the change? Well, the houses get built slowly. That's one thing I have noticed, you know, people, um, they tend to um, buy materials when they have, have cash. So you can take four or five years to build your own house. Uh, who's this coming in? Well, we've got the Aero returning. Not part of the competition, but a very nice fellow from Buenos Aires. Took some friends out for a flight. Yeah. But uh, there were always people who, who liked um, making things here, and uh, now it's become a more of a, a way of making a living. I think it was mainly farming uh, before, but now people get time to, uh, I don't know, expand on the things they really enjoy doing. Mm -hmm. so like I said, we've got artists, we've got a lot of athletes. So over in Eskel, um, there's a running club, and they've got two Olympic athletes here. Oh, really? Yeah, uh, marathon runners, there are a lot of... Um, Mountain runners and, and uh, distance runners in, in the area who compete on a world level. 
And for small, a couple of small towns, you know, there's a good uh, high high level of competition. One's a marathoner, and who's and what's well, the other? Well, there's two Olympic marathoners. There's uh, oh, oh, both are marathoners. Okay. And then there's um, people like Sirkut Rekeman and uh, you know, they're, they're mountain runners. And they, I think Sirkut actually competed in Wales. I saw him there uh, once. Um, but it's a nice place to train. I don't know if it's, we're not that high. Oh, this not... climate, this climate, it's, it's like the best of Colorado. It's like the best of California. Yeah. It's it's a very pleasant climate. Yeah. yeah. And there's some beautiful trails. You know, all the mountains that we see around us, there are trails that you can go trail with really quite, quite easily. So uh, for me, it's a it's a really nice, nice place to live. Mm. And, and all the country, all the open country. Yeah. 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 So we got the leaderboard here, and the leaderboard has Santiago, Santiago Guiana, Guiana, excuse me, Santiago Guiana in the Cessna 170, uh, 164 meters, followed by Kike in the 172 XP at 186 and a half meters, and Gustavo Guiana, and let's see, let's see, that's uh, so the sun, the sun is. Winning. Is winning, yeah. It's the father Gustavo Juliana is, it is 220 meters, and then uh, number fourth is Alejandro Bragg, also in the 172 XP at 230 meters. And last was uh, Horacio Scona in the 172 at 241 meters. So, so we've got uh. So your, got, your son competes, your son, and you competed. How would uh, you, yeah. as a father talking down to your son who's just beaten you, how would you? <laughs> well, in in our particular case, uh, uh, I spent a lot of the time, the, the, we were six years involved, and for the last five years, we, uh, we won first place at Valdez. Uh, three years, we were in the push class, and then the last two years, we were in the unlimited class. And uh, uh, and in that in during all those five six years, I was really the coach, and my son yeah. was the one doing the practice. Yeah. You know, I was I was making sure we had our food and our sleep and the airplanes and our travel and everything organized so that we could do the event and just try to create this vacuum of time and space so that my son Bobby could could blossom and just yeah. on a cool morning like we had this morning we could go out and practice you know if you go out and practice and shoot three or four or five landings for practice in a row um then i'd stand at the line while he would do that uh you know and i would not say a word i would just be there and be aware and he'd go out and do three or four or five landings in a row and come back in and i'd kind of wave him down or he'd just come and stop and uh we just chat for a minute Maybe have a bite to eat or just stretch your legs for a moment. And then when he'd get back in the plane, and again, I would just keep a calm environment with the space of time available. He'd get back in the plane and go fly a second sequence of three or five takeoffs and landings. And those next sequence will always be tighter, always be shorter and more consistent than the first, the first seg segment. So he'd go run those out and then uh, go fly those and then again land, you know, not 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 just continue, but just, you know, be in the air for 10 minutes or so, 15 minutes. And he'd go back out and land again uh, or or go, go back out, land again, and we'd take another break. And that third sequence, again, would be uh, uh, a uh, shorter group, a, a tighter group. And he was, he'd be more comfortable. And then that might be time just to call it a day. So as coach, I got a lot of uh, sense of satisfaction just seeing his, just seeing how the progress can be refined and, and tweaking little things on the plane and keeping only enough fuel. You know, I was always making sure we obviously have enough fuel, but to yeah. keep, the, you know, to monitor things so that we're not carrying any extra weight. Uh, you know, so... That was quite something. So, so we did that for five years, and then when he graduated from college, and he was hired uh, by Delta Airlines to be a uh, actually with Endeavor 
he was hired by Endeavor um, to go to school again to basically learn to fly jets. He, he first flew the CRJ-200, smallest commercial airliner I think there is. And uh, at that time, um, and I said, nope, you need to go. Let's just leave the Valdez stuff alone. We've got yeah. five years of continuous wins. Yeah. Why don't you just go on and uh, focus on flying a jet? Because I've never done that, and you haven't done it before, and you need to put your all of this creativity, this this training and thought into the disciplines you've learned in the stole world yes. into learning to fly that jet. And so he did that, and he walked away from it. I think that was hard initially for him, but, uh, you know, Aircraft companies were offering him airplanes. He wanted him to feature their airplanes so it would look good and, you know, free airplanes to fly, you know. And But he turned all that, that turned that down, and um, uh, now he's uh, now he's a first officer with with Delta on the 757, 767, and he's um, and he really enjoys his career and he's making money. He's a, you know he's he's he's, he's married and. He supports his wife, and they've got a they've got a two month old baby now. So he's built a whole life around it. Yeah. So it's uh it's been a really it's been a really positive experience all the way around. Nice, that's a nice. Uh, I can take back. Up. Yeah. So when you say, well, if, how is it when your son cannot perform you with that? It's like, well, it's fine. Let him go. Yeah, Let yeah, him yeah. do it. You know, it's kind yeah. of part of the natural progression. You know, you want to see your children do well you know yeah. so 